Okay, here we go again. Hashimoto's and Epstein-Barr virus. You know, um, I've been involved in Hashimoto's literally since the beginning, I think, of when nobody even knew what the word Hashimoto's was. Uh, because uh, I studied with uh, Dr. Karasian, and if you don't know who he is, you can get his book. He wrote about it in 2009. But he was the guy who said Hashimoto's was actually causing most people's thyroid problems. And, um, and, it, and the early understanding of it was that Epstein-Barr virus was the cause. Then it was viral infections are the cause. So like herpes viruses can, can be a trigger. Uh, Epstein-Barr virus, uh, we're gonna talk about more, can be a trigger. Um, cytomegaloviruses can be a trigger. So there's like six viruses that can be a trigger. And, at the, and early on, it was just like, it's a viral infection. It's a virus in the thyroid, and that's what Hashimoto's is. And it isn't even that, okay? It's, it's more that, it, it's more that um, Epstein-Barr virus is a, is a trigger. So I, I, I'm personally, my personal case, for those of you who have never seen me, I have Hashimoto's. And, um, and it's, it's kind of an interesting case because I probably got it at 21 years old. And uh, at 20, 21, I got mono. And I was down for six weeks. And I had to cancel an entire athletic season. I played soccer. I uh, played baseball. I wrestled. I, did, I literally had to cancel an entire year of sports because I was fatigued. I had mono. Mono's supposed to go away after like four or five or six weeks and then you get back to it. What we now know is, is that if you have Epstein-Barr virus, I mean, if you got mono and you had it for like a year like me and, 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 and yeah, I went to go on a soccer field, I thought I was going to be able to play again. It was like, I was like, you know, like my legs felt like they were like 500 pounds each. Um, you probably had gotten an, an Epstein-Barr infection and developed Hashimoto's at that point in time. And for me, being athletic, it was kind of interesting because I never really had quite completely the energy that I had after that again, even when I got better. And I always, you know, wonder about that. I had to sleep more and I, and I had to battle my weight. I, I mean, and I, I stayed pretty active athletically through a, a lot of my life. And yet I said I had to battle my weight and I, had, and I was always like had to sleep a lot. And then in my 40s, I ended up getting uh, stressed and then I ended up getting pneumonia and then that blew up into fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and a ton of things. One of the things we found out was I had Hashimoto's. Now in retrospect, we know that I probably developed it 20 some years earlier and what causes mono is Epstein-Barr virus. So that was, uh, so this is kind of the flow of it and this is why you've heard a lot about Epstein-Barr virus. And then a couple of years ago, there was a book that came out <laughs> and by the intuitive psychic. Now, I don't get me wrong. I'm not going to question anything. I've seen a lot of things in my career that have blown my mind. So I'm, I'm not saying that there can't be uh, intuitive medical people. I'm not. Okay. But I am saying that this guy's full of crap. <laughs> I mean, so he writes this whole book that I, I had a vision one night and it was all Epstein-Barr virus. And then... He goes on to give all of the solutions that look awfully familiar to the solutions that several of my mentors have been coming up with for years and years and years and years. Look an awful lot like Dr. Karazian's book, Why Do I Stop Thyroid Problems When My Lab Tests Are Normal? So anyway, so, so that blew up. So all of a sudden I'm getting like a million questions on like, how do I get rid of my Epstein-Barr virus? So having said all that, Epstein-Barr virus is one of 39 triggers for Hashimoto's. Okay, so it's a trigger. It's a trigger, meaning that the person already, like for example, everybody in my family had thyroid problems. My mother had hers out, my aunt had hers out, my grandmother had a goiter, um, and I even had other autoimmune problems in my family. So, so that got triggered, okay? It triggers a genetic propensity to develop it. And it's not that you get a virus in your thyroid and, and, and it's that, it's a trigger. So is it a trigger? Yes. 
uh, does it need to be killed? Um, it's hard to kill. <laughs> if you have Epstein-Barr virus, you're probably going to get tested and you're going to have it. And, 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 and what you have to figure out is, is it active or is it not active? And there's a test for that. However, even that test is not perfect. And I'm being kind when I say that, okay? So, so here's the skinny on Epstein-Barr virus now. If you've had mono in the past, um, there's a good chance you have Epstein-Barr virus in your system. Uh, you can get Epstein-Barr virus. Um, you know, obviously you can con contract Epstein-Barr virus and other vi and vi viruses, just like the COVID virus. You're run down, you're compromised, your blood sugar is bad, you're overweight, you never exercise. You now make yourself open to contracting a viral infection and you can get an Epstein-Barr virus infection. Here's the thing. I only need to treat Epstein-Barr virus in a fibromyalgia case or a Hashimoto's case or a chronic condition case if it's active. And here's the way that you'll know if it's active. You can run the labs and, and the labs can say it's active. But if the person is, to me, my understanding of it, the way I make decisions on whether, whether to attack or not, if the person's not having viral issues, I am not addressing it. If you're not getting an active viral set of symptoms, if you're not getting you know, the, the, the fevers or the chills, or you're just at least feel like you have the flu, or you're not getting swelling in your nodes, or maybe your thyroid's not, you know, maybe your thyroid's swelling and, and, and going up and down. So if you have those things, then we're gonna be using a alternative. We're gonna be using an alternative natural viral attack, and there's a ton of them that you can use, and they work. And they work if you get the right product and, it's the, and the product is legitimate and you do it at the right dosages. And maybe you're doing other things like, you know, calming down a person's gut or whatever it is. But you can get viral infections under control most of the time with, 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 with alternative means. And, um, and, but the point is, is it's, a, it's, it's a trigger, okay? It, it then can hang around in your system, kind of like Lyme, um, like cytomegalovirus, like herpes viruses, think herpes virus, think, think herpes virus for shingles. You have the virus, it never goes away, you get stressed, you overwork, you know, something happens, COVID comes along, everything's negative, your immune system drops down, and suddenly you get shingles. You take some viral stuff, maybe if you're, if you're you know, if you're, maybe, maybe you're into taking like, uh, lysine and you take high doses of lysine and it dampens away and it goes away. But the main thing is you, you got to get out of the stress. All of a sudden, boom, it goes back down. Same thing. It's the same thing for all these viruses. It's the same thing for Coxsackie virus. It's, it's the same thing for Epstein-Barr virus. It's the same thing for the herpes viruses. They're going to express themselves when you're compromised. So that's kind of how it works. If you've, if you've been exposed to it, you've tested positive to it, you have to know it's there. And you have to know that if you drop, you know, if you, if you, if you get in a compromised position, uh, as I just got done talking about, and your physiology becomes vulnerable, it can express itself. And you should look for it expressing itself exactly like a virus. You should feel sick. You should feel like fluish. You should feel like, like I, don't, I feel like I'm getting the flu. I feel like I got the flu. I feel like I'm getting a little chills. I'm, I'm getting a little swollen here. If you're not getting those, the likelihood is that it's not the trigger, or it's not one of the, most people have more than, than one than one uh, uh, trigger, but but, it, but it's not it's not part of that person's clinical picture as far as being one of the one or two or three or five or six or seven triggers that are continually perpetuating their Hashimoto's or their fibromyalgia. So so now with all disrespect to the guy who wrote the book that said. It's all, I, I saw it, I woke up, it, it was all Epstein-Barr virus. That's the cause. That's wrong. It is, it is, it is as I just got done saying, uh, relative to how you look at it, how you address it, how you evaluate it, and then, and, then, and then attack it. If all of those things are there, then attack. I've had people that we've done that with. We've used high doses of D, we've used high doses of lysine, we have some cool herbs and botanical products. 
I, I've seen people's like life change in minutes when they have had that. I, I should say hours or days, but um, when they have had that, and we and we treat it, and uh, and and when, when when all that other stuff was there, they oh they got the they get the labs, and the lab says exactly, but they have none of those symptoms, and I and I do the same thing to them, <laughs> nothing, no change. Okay, so we've we've worked with this for years and years and years and years and years. That's the best data that I can give you on Epstein Barr virus and Hashimoto's at this point in time.